So welcome to physics. And the first question we have to ask is, what is physics? So physics is all about patterns. We see patterns in science, in the physical world, with, for example, the star constellations and the different um, star signs, potentially in earlier times that were derived from those uh, star constellations. The ancients are seeing patterns in the sky. You've also got the ability of seeing patterns in the sky in terms of eclipses. So every now and then the, the moon moves in front of the earth um, and in front of the sun as well, creating an eclipse. And early astronomers uh, use these constant patterns to then build predictions and models. We uh, again see patterns in science with the weather systems which have improved over hundreds of years. Okay, so now we can see for about seven days in advance about the weather that's going to occur in our backyard. So again, these are the patterns of the universe. We see patterns in business um, with the ebb and flow of share prices, uh, with inflation and interest rates. This is the reason why physicists are in high demand also in the business industry, because they can recognize patterns using models and making predictions. So in terms of my classroom this year, there are three things I ask for to work persistently, to take risks and asking questions, asking lots of questions, and communicate productively together. Work as a team rather than as an individuals. Let's use our hive mind to learn together. So an illustration of science um, is a couple of dice. Okay, so what's on the hidden side? Now, if you look um, and make observations about the cubes based on what you can see, you will observe that the two sides opposite each other are going to equal 7. Okay, so then you can use these observations to predict the unknown number that you cannot see. Okay, that's an example of physics in action. Okay, so we're making observations, we're making a, a mathematical model, and using that mathematical model to make predictions about what's going to happen. Then we check that prediction and see if it matches our mathematical model. If it doesn't, we go back and uh, observe further. So in terms of patterns in science, uh, here are a couple of uh, patterns that we see. The number of people who drown in, after falling in a swimming pool, and the number of films that Nicolas Cage has appeared in. And there's a correlation there about 0 0.6, 0 0.7, which is a positive correlation. Okay, so you can clearly see there is some sort of relationship. Um, and you can see very strong uh, correlation here between the per capita consumption of cheese in the US and people who have died in becoming tangled in their bed sheets. That's a very positive co uh, kind of relationship, correlation, at 0.95. Now we know that that's not the whole story. So the lesson we learned from those two examples is that it is important to search for patterns in the universe, but we don't want to be creating patterns where patterns do not exist. That's one of the dangers of um, making predictions. So that's uh, where our knowledge as scientists and physicists can come forward so we can then tease out um, the causation rather than the correlation uh, between variables. Okay, so in our class, there's going to be a large group of people. That's why we want you all to work together. Some of us like to act and try things, plunge right in. Uh, some of us are speculators. They like to look at the big picture and the possibilities before moving in and acting. And there's those who like to care for each other and make sure everybody's heard in the class. And there's those who have attention for detail, who like to know uh, who, what, and why uh, before you're acting. So pause the video now and think about which one you most identify with. Okay, so after pausing that video, it's an illustration of how we have to work as a team together to succeed. Just like in science, when you're working with teams of scientists, we work together in class to achieve the best results for both us and our classmates.